welcome to the Crew 4 Post Splashdown Media Teleconference. Our event should begin momentarily, and if you're also monitoring the event video, please mute the audio on your TV or computer and listen only to audio from the phone. If you would like to ask a question during the question and answer portion of the briefing, please press star 1 to be added to the queue. If you would like to withdraw your question, press star 2. And do not use your speakerphone when you're asking your question. And thank you. You may begin. All right. Thank you, everybody, and welcome to our Return to Earth Telecon. We're here from NASA Johnson Space Center. We just had the four Crew 4 astronauts aboard Dragon safely splash down off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida. They splashed down at 4.55 p.m. Eastern Time. NASA astronauts Bob Hines, Chell Lindgren, and Jessica Watkins, and the ESA astronaut Samantha Chris Ferretti. Here we have some of the leadership from both NASA and SpaceX to offer opening remarks and then take questions from media. As you just heard, use the uh, star one to get in the queue if you want to ask a question. Joining us today, we have Steve Stitch, manager of the Commercial Crew Program from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, Joel Montalbano, manager of the International Space Station Program here at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, and Sarah Walker, director of Dragon Mission Management at SpaceX. So as I mentioned, we'll do opening remarks, and then we'll go over to questions. And with that, I will hand it over to Steve. Uh, thank you, Dan, uh, and thanks uh, for all the interest and for you being here this afternoon. Uh, super exciting time, a lot of smiles uh, in the control center when I left. We had a real smooth undocking uh, and ride home for the Crew 4 astronauts after spending uh, 170 days on ISS. Uh, the whole undock... Um, Back away from the space station, uh, the deorbit entry and landing were all very normal, as was the recovery. Uh, the entire team did a great job. It was our uh, shortest return to date from undock to landing, just under five hours. Uh, we landed uh, at off the coast of Jacksonville at about 4.55 Eastern, which was our target. Uh, the winds and seas were well within limits, about uh, six knots of wind and three-foot seas, so it was a, a great day to come home. Uh, you know, these crew handovers for us and commercial crew and for Joel and ISS are really a busy time. You know, it was just last week on October 5th uh, that we launched uh, Crew 5. The crew's already at, hard at work on the space station. Joel and I got to talk to them yesterday, and they have all smiles still, and they're ready to get to work. Um, you know, and Chell and the crew also had all smiles yesterday when we talked to them. I know these missions may seem easy, but they're uh, really pretty challenging, and, you know, can't thank our teams for all the hard work, the dedication, and the diligence required to make sure everything's right and ready to go for the missions. Um, the crew is doing great. They got out of the vehicle. Um, and they were smiling when they came out. Uh, they'll come back to Houston uh, here tonight except for Samantha. Uh, she'll board a plane and go to Europe. Uh, I know they're all excited to be home and see their families uh, based on the conversations that we've had with them. Uh, you know, weather was a big challenge this week. Um, Probably the first time we've experienced uh, dealing with cold fronts. Uh, we set up for the opportunity on Wednesday uh, to Tampa to try to come home, and we couldn't get comfortable with that opportunity because of precipitation ahead of the front that came through Florida. Uh, yesterday, we made a really good run at landing at Tallahassee. Uh, we knew it would be a little bit difficult. Uh, the cold front had passed through, and we thought we wouldn't have any precip or high winds, and we just really couldn't get comfortable with the winds at landing, and so... We took it down pretty close, and we, we decided to wave off before we got uh, through uh, depressing the vestibule and using some of the ISS consumables. Um, you know, today we set up for the landing at Jacksonville, and the weather predictions were very, very good, and they, they held firm all day and allowed us to land safely today. So we really a huge thanks to our, our weather team uh, here in Houston and also at the 45th Space Wing. Just overall, a, a big thanks to the NASA team, the SpaceX team, our international partners, um, and the other agencies that we work with, including the U.S. Coast Guard, who uh, provides protection uh, for the landing, uh, the U.S. Navy that provided uh, some support for uh, crew rescue for the Crew-5 launch, the U.S. Air Force Detachment 3, who's been doing rescue for us through the commercial crew program, the FAA, the FCC, and all the other agencies involved. A huge thank you. It was a great day today, and now I'll hand it over to Joel. 
Hey, thank you, Steve, and, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. It is awesome to have four humans back on Earth following a, just a fantastic expedition. Uh, as Steve mentioned, 170 days on the International Space Station, uh, completing just over 2,700 orbits and traveling over 72 million miles, completing 250, over 250 investigations in the areas of human research, uh, technology demonstrations that we'll need for exploration, as well as completing some of our low Earth orbit commercialization activities. Uh, this crew saw the arrival of five visiting vehicles and the departure of six visiting vehicles. And uh, as we talked about, had an awesome handover with Frank Rubio and the Crew 5 team. Um, and really, when we talked to them yesterday, the, the smiles on their faces, they, the Crew 4 guys were just uh, as excited as they were yesterday, as we saw on day one of their mission, and we expect the same from Crew 5. Uh, looking forward, we have a busy fall and winter. Um, we have a progress launch scheduled at the end of October. Looking at uh, October 26th, followed in early November by the NG-18, currently scheduled for November 6th. Um, we have a SpaceX cargo mission, and we have a number of U.S. and, and Russian uh, EVAs. Uh, with that, uh, let me hand it over to Sarah. Thanks, Joel. Um, well, just an hour or two ago, as you're hearing, we welcomed Dragon and the Crew 4 astronauts safely back to Earth after 170 days docked to the National Space Station. I'll, I'll say from my perspective, watching the vehicle data those five and a half months was delightfully boring while the crew got to do all the exciting work on board ISS. That's exactly how we like it. The, the Freedom, Freedom vehicle performed beautifully the whole time and, and especially today on, on the day of its return. So earlier today, um, Dragon autonomously, autonomously undocked and performed multiple departure burns to move away from the ISS. And then over the next five and a half hours or so, it continued its return to Earth. It successfully jettisoned its trunk and closed the nose cone prior to the final deorbit burn. This was actually the fastest um, return we've done on a, uh, on, I was going to say on a crew mission, but on any mission to date, uh, about five and a half hours. Um, Dragon's reentry into Earth's atmosphere and splashdown was nominal, um, including the deployment of all four main parachutes. And we're just happy to welcome the Crew 4 astronauts home to their family and friends. As always, we stay vigilant and we review all the data from every mission, uh, this mission too. Um, so we're stepping into that uh, kind of standard post-flight process now and we'll continue to, to learn and share with our partners as we head into future upcoming missions. So. Uh, th thanks, NASA and ESA, for your ongoing partnership, um, for your trust to, to safely launch and return your crews, and, and as Steve said, all the agencies that helped us um, with today's operations. And, and maybe I'll just end with a personal story. So uh, yesterday I was over at the SpaceX daycare where my, my three youngest children are, and I noticed two photos of the Crew 4 crew that were, were hung proudly in the infant classroom. They're about a foot off the ground, and they're well crinkled from frequent handling. Um, and I, I just love that, that Chell, Bob, uh, Jessica, and Samantha's faces are a part of their daily environment, right? So even the littlest among us can can learn from and root for the astronauts that, that we at SpaceX are, are proud to serve. So Crew 4, we're, we're glad you had such a productive and meaningful mission um, on board the space station, and we're all excited now to welcome you home. All right, thank you, Sarah. With that, we'll start our Q&A section. Again, reminder, if you want to ask a question, press star 1 to get into the queue. We will start off with Russell Pounds and Pacific Rim Media. Russell? Oh, thanks, folks. And uh, Sarah, great story about the kids enjoying uh, <laughs> the, the crew up there. Uh, my question today, I think, is, might be best for Joel. Um, I'm calling from Alaska, and the question's about rural health care and telehealth. And I, I was curious what you've learned on the station that can support this area of medicine. Thanks. Hey, good question, Russell. You know, one of the things that we've been seeing a real increase on board the International Space Station has uh, been the, the use of ultrasound by our doctors, uh, looking at uh, the different astronauts' um, organs and, and doing medical checks. And, and the cool thing is we're doing this all remote, right? So you're being, uh, you have some guidance from the ground, uh, but the astronauts on orbit, and you can use this 
for people in remote locations, right? We're, we're just testing it on board space station, but it doesn't have to be in space. You can use this technology for any remote location. And we're in the process of fine tuning it and getting better and better at this. But what, the, what it buys you is you don't have to have a medical doctor. You can just have a medical doctor at a, at a hospital and then directing the patient and taking data. So one of the coolest things I think we're using on board the International Space Station. All right. Next up, we have Marvin Marshall with the Nighttime News Space Report. Marvin. I'm, hi, my name is Marvin Marshall from the Nighttime News Space Report here on Twitch.tv. Um, and now, my question um, is for, you know, anyone who might know this. Uh, now, are there any, uh, you know, reports on first meals that were aboard Megan today uh, for the crew? And do you guys know if, uh, the, you know, the astronauts, We'll get to see the Falcon 9 launch uh, tonight if the plan holds. And thank you again. A huge congrats to SpaceX, NASA, ESA, uh, on another successful commercial crew mission. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is Steve. Uh, I, I don't know what they're going to eat on, uh, on Megan. You know, I, what they, the, their typical protocol is is to be, uh, you know, flown off the ship uh, back to the Jacksonville airport. And then um, one of the first things that's done there is a series of, uh, what's called baseline data collections. And so what, what we're trying to learn from this baseline data collection is how the crew adapts from zero G back to, to Earth's gravity. And this is going to help us out as we talk about uh, missions uh, to the moon and Mars is how the, the body re readapts after a long period of time on another planet. And so that's one of the first things that happened. And then the plan for the crew after that is uh, obviously to come back here to Houston and then uh, Samantha will fly uh, in a plane to Europe. So, unfortunately, I think they're going to miss the Falcon 9 launch tonight. But uh, I know they'll be excited to be back here in Houston and start uh, to do their recuperation and spend time with their families. All right. One more reminder, if you have a question, use star 1 to get into the queue. Right now we've just got one left, and so we'll go to Stephen Clark with Space Flight Now. Stephen? I really pre appreciate y'all doing this uh, after the splashdown. Congratulations. Um, I think I have a couple, if I may. Uh, first, uh, probably, well, I think they're probably both for Sarah Walker, but Steve Sitch is welcome to chime in. Um, first of all, uh, for Crew 6, which spacecraft are you planning to use for uh, that mission in your fleet? And uh, also wanted to follow up on some questions earlier in the month, I think before the Crew 5 launch, about what you're doing at Pat 40 to prepare for crew and cargo missions? Can you add some color to that? What you're, what you know, what sort of infrastructure you're building out there, and and where that stands in construction right now, and when it could be ready to support first cargo and then crew missions at Pat 40. Thanks. Yeah, um, I will. Uh, let's see, the second question about uh, Pat 40. So yeah, what we're we, we think it's a huge blessing that we have multiple. Um, multiple launch sites to launch all of our vehicles from, and uh, we think it'll be a huge upgrade to make uh, Launch Complex 40 also uh, cargo and crew capable, capable of launching Dragon missions instead of um, just our satellite fairing missions. So, so yeah, we are um, going to uh, build that capability as quickly as we can. I think sometime next year it should be ready. And uh, y you mentioned it um, exactly. We'll we'll make sure that it is um, up and ready with all of the cargo certifications first, and then we'll we'll partner closely with NASA to uh, get through all the additional um, crew certifications. Um, we're hopeful that it will be able to be used very soon in the next year or so, um, year or two for both. Yeah, th and I'll follow on the Steve Stitch. Uh, yeah, we are very excited about having the crew capability at, at Pad 40. Uh, eventually, it'll look uh, quite a bit like a typical, uh, you know, launch complex for a crew. It'll have a, a tower with an elevator so the crew can go up. It'll have a crew access arm. Um, it'll have all the systems needed to uh, support crew and the Dragon spacecraft. Uh, you know, it has unique consumables that get topped off at the pad uh, when we do the the dry dress or the exercise with the crew a few days before launch, uh, the team goes in and replenishes oxygen and the nitrox and so forth. So that'll all be there. We were following along with SpaceX. So they've already done a series of design reviews for the various systems uh, for that. And then we're, we're excited this year to get a little bit more into the detailed design and then uh, for SpaceX to start construction. Um, let's see, the other question was relative to Crew-6. Uh, Crew-6 is going to fly 
uh, the Endeavour spacecraft, and that flew on uh, Demo 2 and uh, Crew 2 and Axiom 1, and it is starting its processing uh, at Dragonland. In fact, one of the first activities we're in the middle of here is uh, getting the prop system checked out and getting some of the thrusters ready to install. Uh, we are already in commercial crew working hand-in-hand -hand with SpaceX to prepare for that flight. Um, in the springtime, and, and uh, in fact, we're going to have a review. Uh, you know, in commercial crew, we work very slowly, so Monday we'll have a review to start working on Crew 6. So, but thanks for the question. Oh, yeah, thanks, Steve, for circling back. I forgot, forgot the first question. Appreciate that. All right, and it looks like I did get quick follow-ups. Uh, we'll go once more to Russell Pounds at Pacific Rim Media. Yeah, thanks. I think this one uh, is for Sarah, but for anyone who has uh, insight here, um, a lot of our reporting is targeted at the elementary and middle school kids. And the question is, how do you overcome challenges and meet those uh, high demands for that job that you have? Thanks. That's a, that's a tough question. Uh, wow, um, that's a tough question. I think uh, I think you take it a day at the t a day at a time. Uh, I think you do your homework and and prepare for the task at hand. And I think you rely on your team to um, to to support you. And um, if you, if you have a team that is uh, experts at all the different things that you need to accomplish the task, you'll you'll succeed. Yeah, and let's see, commercial crew, you know, we, we have our calendar contest where, the, where children can, can uh, we have different uh, age groups that they can uh, draw a picture that represents some their favorite, you know, space adventure or space launch, favorite space vehicle. So we have that open in CCP through the end of October, I think. And then, you know, I, I would say my personal story probably is I did get interested in space when I was, uh, you know, in elementary and middle, middle school. I read all the books in our real small Catholic school of uh, what I could get my hands on on the space program, and I was probably a space nerd, and, you know, NASA really motivated me. And hopefully what we're doing now uh, with flying our crews to the space station and uh, on with SpaceX and on Dragon and very soon uh, Boeing, and then the activities on space station are really motivating the kids out there to go pursue uh, fields in math and science. And, you know, when I get to meet some young kids, they're remarkable today, and they're able to do things that that you, you, that is pretty amazing. And when they have the right motivation and uh, and passion for what they're doing, they'll be successful. Yeah, this has got to be the coolest time ever to be a kid. You you guys have never known a time when humans were not actively in space. I think Joel, the space station's been had continuous human presence for 20, 21 years now, um, which is just incredible. So there's so much opportunity uh, that's just, just waiting for you guys to, to discover. All right. We'll do one more follow-up from Marvin at Nighttime News Space Report, and then we'll call it a day. Marvin? Hi, thank you again. Marvin Marshall here, again from the Nighttime News Space Report. Um, now, I noticed uh, there are some pretty impressive uh, times there on recovery today. I think, I think it looked like, you know, roughly, you know, 30 minutes, uh, you know, after splashdown, we were already... Uh, you know, getting the capsule on the boat here. What what was the you know the the plan time if you guys had one uh, for how how quick you wanted to get everybody on the boat here? And then you know moving along here, you know, do you guys see you know you know I know SpaceX is always improving. Do you guys see you know uh, you know how 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 much uh, room of, for improvement do we have you know moving forward here to get crew on boats uh, in the future here? Thank you again. Yeah, uh, it is a fast operation. Um, that was a pretty standard timeline for us, and um, those teams have a lot of training before the day of. Um, they they run through these operations over and over, and um, yeah, there's a number of assets out there that they're managing to ensure we can get to the crew quickly and, and safely and get the vehicle on board. That was, a, that was a pretty standard recovery operation, I think. I think, you know, from a NASA perspective, we were wanted to be within an hour when we sort of set up the program, get them, get them out of the water onto the ship within an hour. SpaceX is certainly doing a great job uh, on all their flights, whether it be crew or cargo. And I think today is probably, I didn't really time it, and then, but it was probably 30 minutes or less, so it was great. So, uh, And I think one of the things we've been trying to do with weather is find the good weather for recovery as well. One of the factors really is to have nice, uh, smooth sea states, which today we did have, and then 
you know, relatively benign win, which was true today. And then it was a great, really a great day for the recovery team to do their jobs and do a great job of getting the crew out of the water. All right, and that'll do it for our questions today. So thank you to our briefers, Steve, Joel, and Sarah, and thanks for everyone for tuning in and to media who submitted their questions as we welcome home Bob, Chell, Jessica, and Samantha. They're going to be making their way to Houston, so be sure to tune in to the national social media for any images of their homecoming. And we will be having an event and a media availability with the crew in about a week's time, so stay tuned, and you can head over to nasa.gov for updates on timing for that. So once more, thanks everybody. Welcome home crew four. That'll wrap it for us. Everyone go off and enjoy your weekend. Thanks. And this does conclude today's conference. You may disconnect at this time.